Hello, welcome to my Let's Play of Steve Jackson's Sorcery, Part 1, The Shamatani Hills. Let's get started. You have walked the wilds of Kahabad, through Kahar and the spiteful backlands, all the way into Mampag. You have survived traps, thieves, serpents, and vengeful gods. And now, it is here, the crown of kings. It is said the crown was never forged, only found by Shalhana the Reformer, a lowly foot so soldier who became emperor of the Eastern world. Such is the power of the crown. The air around it crackles with influence. Let's take it. Your destiny awaits. With the crown in your hands, you will be as powerful as Shalhana. The goblins are arming, the giants are waking, and the birdmen carving cruel daggers from stone war will come but you will prevent it but then the image of the crown begins to flicker you rush forwards it's a trap and startle yourself awake you are alone exhausted in a little hut in the outpost settlement your unimaginable journey is not even a single step begun Inkle presents Steve Jackson's Sorcery, Part 1. The Shamatani Hills. It is sunrise. You dress, breakfast on bread and goat's milk, and collect the pack and sword from beside your bed. You pause to test the blade against your thumb. The blacksmith has done well. The edge is keen and draws a narrow line of blood. Outside your, the hut, you hear the outpost settlement stirring into life. Taking a moment more, you close your eyes and raise a prayer to your spirit guide. This morning, it has the form of a panther. But what will become of your journey once your journey truly begins? A great calm descends upon you. Time then to depart. You lift back the flap of your hut and step into the early morning sunshine. Eyes follow as you leave the hut and walk towards the great Shamatani wall. The frontiers people of this tiny settlement are well aware of your mission. You turn to them and bow. Some smile in reply but are too afraid to approach. Others make gestures of protection. You are going beyond the wall, so they believe you are to be cursed. A man is waiting in the path of the Cantopani Gate, the final doorway between Annaland and the wilds of Kahabad. You recognize the sergeant of the Sightmaster Warriors. He holds out his hand. Greeting, sergeant. He touches your forehead with two fingers. You are almost ready, he says. I have a gift from you. From the king, 24 gold pieces. It is all we can spare this time. That's all the king could give you, 24 gold pieces? Kind of a crappy gift. He holds out his pouch. Take it. You accept the ge gift generously. Thank you. You should buy some supplies before you pass the wall, the sergeant says. And you must collect your spell book if you wish magic to aid you. Finally, you should, should you wish to practice your sword play, I will go one last round with you. And he points with his staff towards the training ground. You walk with the sergeant to the training ground, and he, and he wraps the base of his staff in leather. To begin, we will practice the stances. First, defend yourself against me. The Sightmaster is a powerful en enemy. By defending, you will receive minimum damage from any attack he makes. The Sightmaster Sergeant defends himself as well. The round is a stalemate. I will defend myself. Whenever the whatever attack you play will damage me, but a strong attack will use up more power. You should choose a weak attack. I'll just defend again. Huh. You defend yourself again, building up power for the next turn. Also defends. No one's hurt. My next attack will be one of my strongest. You can perform a full attack. You may overpower me, but otherwise you may... You had best defend yourself. Bam. You play a strong attack, overpowering the Sightmaster Sergeant. He bows. 
You have finished me. Excellent. You seem to remember the basics. This, you seem to remember the basics, the sergeant says. Good. Another round? I think that's enough. Very good. But if you wish about in earnest, I will warn you. I will not go easy on you. Then he indicates the wider yard where there is space for a true match. Let's go collect my spellbook. One of the huts, set slightly back from the others, is decorated with glyphs and strange symbols. A terrible smell emanates from its doorway. This is the hut of the chief mage. He has been preparing your spellbook for days, reading star charts to work out which spells will be available to you in the different locations in the hills and beyond. You lift the flap to go inside. The mage looks up with you with haggard, sleepless eyes and presses the book into your hands. Do you understand how to use this? Tell me. With Each spell is crafted through an alignment of three stars. The spell Zap, for example, is made by aligning, the, aligning Zorastruthra and e Aegis and Pini. But that is not important. What matters is the what the spell is called and what it does. Zap will give you control over lightning. Hot will create a fireball. Foff will create a force field around you. Shall I continue? Tell me more, the mage nods. The law spell is formed from Lith, Aegis, and Wex, and it will allow you to control the will of unintelligent creatures. The wall spell is quite different. and uses different stars. The order matters, you see. Wall creates an invisible barrier, and will find you will find the rest in the book, he adds, tapping the leather-bound volume. The mage looks surprised. Well, the dop spell is useful for locks. The walks will shield you in battle, and dumb will cause clumsiness. Remember, some spells will cost you effort, but other ones don't, will not work without focus, and items of some kind. You need to read the book to know what. So in your spell book. The volume contains 48 spells of high craft, as discovered and passed down from generation to generation of sorcerers from the earliest days of the Eastern world. Each spell is formed of three letters, and each spell will take energy to cast. Furthermore, some spells will fail without the use of a particular item or focus. The six most useful spells, Zap, Lightning, Foff, Force Field, Law, Control of Creatures, Dumb, Clumsy, Hot as a Fireball, Walls, and Invisible Wall. And they take three points of stamina each one. So these are more detailed about each of those. There's also Big, Walk. So Big makes you Big, Walk. Let's see, what does it do? Invisible Metal Shield, Dop. Opens locks, Raz requires beeswax, and makes a blade razor sharp. Sus, um, protective action, telepathically, talks about danger. Six, creates six copies of you. Jig, requires a bamboo flute, and will cause people to dance. Gob, requires goblin teeth. Vob, requires a giant tooth, or someone's a giant. Gum requires glue and makes things sticky. How tells you where to go. Doc um, does a healing thing. Requires a potion. Doze um, makes people go slowly. Dud um, creates invisible jewelry, invisible treasure. Mage um, neutralizes spell attacks. Pop um, explodes pebbles. Fall makes you light so you don't fall fast. Dim. Um, what does this one do? Muddles the mind of a creature. Fog creates a fog in indoor closed room with no windows, which is kind of specific. Mud requires sand and creates a quicksand. Niff. Let's see. Creates a vomit smell. Tell. Reads and reads the creatures minds. Gak. Let's see. Well it creates a terrible fear. Sap. Let's see what this one does. Demoralizes creatures. There's a lot of spells in this game. God makes the person like you. Kin makes a replica of an enemy under your control. Pep gives you extra strength. Rock um, makes them into stone. 
Nip. Let's see. Three times speed. Huff. Let's see. Tremendous wind. I'm just going through all the spells to see. Because it's kind of the game. One of the one of the points of this game is to like cast spells at various times. So you kind of need to know what ingredients you need to go collect. Like this one needs a staff of oak sapling. So if we see that in the game, we know we can start casting this one. Um, so it's always good to be familiar with all these goofy spells. Probably should have a list on the side to like actually remember all these spells. So nap is sleeping, I believe. Yeah, moving slowly. Zen. Fly. Yes, flying. Yes is convincing creatures. Almost done. Sun is a torch and a bright light. Kid is is an illusion. Creating and making an illusion real. Rap. Understanding languages. Yap is animal language. Zip is teleport a short distance. Far is seeing far away. Rez is waking up the dead. And Zed, the most formidable spell in lore. No one knows why. In all recorded history, the spell has only been cast once by a powerful necromancer from Tharbian, who was never seen again. Its effects are unknown. The necromancer's notes were found, but were crazed and unclear. Treat with extreme caution. So mostly this is a game about trying to remember what spells to cast, I think. Let's go buy some rations. And a lot of reading, of course. So, let's see, he sells a bunch of stuff. Two gold pieces per ration. So we can try to haggle. Do you know who I am? I'm An An Anlan's great hero, you tell him. The man looks uncomfortable. I know that, but I have to feed my family today. Whatever happens to the crown? So we can buy one, two, and if you buy more, I think it's giving you more rations than two. I think two should be good enough. You hand over your coins. The man place, places two rations carefully into your pack. You must, must be sure to eat every day or you will suffer, the sergeant tells you. Eating more will give you extra strength, but it's not necessary. Alright, let's approach the gate. You reach the gate. The sergeant places one hand on the wood. The gate has been locked for some time to detour raiders, but you will have no difficulty. The stars in this place allow the dop spell to be crafted. He stands back. So we could cast, cost, cast dop. We can also cast, let's see, zap. And that will give us lightning. Let's cast lightning on the door. You cast lightning. You cast a spell, building up a powerful electric charge with your, with your cupped hand. Then you release it at the door. The great wooden gate explodes in a flash of light. The sight master laughs grimly. We will have to rebuild that, that before the goblins raid us, but I am pleased to see you have power. My apologies are... Be silent before I blast you. The sergeant bows to you. <laughs> he doesn't care that you're mean. One last word. When you have the crown, find the highest point you can find. We'll be watching. Watching from where? From here, of course. Sightmaster warriors are selected from birth for their incredible powers of telescopic vision. Selected from birth? What does that mean? They kill the kids that don't see far? How do you select a kid from birth? You do not know how far he can see. Tell me what lies ahead. This path leads to Canto Cantopani, a settlement of traders. Most are rogues or th thieves. You should be there before the sun has reached its peak. From there, three routes lead on to Christotani. Christotanti. No single route is safe. Kahabad is a land of devils. And beyond, Kar? I cannot see so far. Oh, you do have sight limits, huh? But once you have crossed at the city port of traps, you will enter the Baklans. They say that day and night are controlled by forces other than the sun. And from Kar, too, your progress will be watched. It is time to go. Striding away, you pass through the gate. The faces of the folk watching your departure reveal the hopes that rest upon you and your quest. The early morning air is crisp, and the sun, rising sun pants, paints the slopes in shades of peaceful beauty, concealing the evil that lies ahead. All right, that's a good, good spot to end the episode. We'll be back next time on Sorcery.